And unit six is the datum reference frame. And in that unit, you're going to have a little short review. There's going to be some review, and you might say, well, I know all of this, but it's going to be a little bit of review. Then we're going to go into the degrees of freedom concept. And what we do is we define uh, parts now, uh, datum reference frame and degrees of freedom, and you're familiar with that, the X, Y, Z, uh, X, Y, Z for translation and rotation, U, V, and W. So the standard, uh, just the way they explain things is a little different. It's just, uh, it's almost like, uh, you know, it's woven in a fabric. I don't know how else to say it. It's almost like a cell phone. Can you, what was it like before you had a cell phone and what changed when you had a cell phone? Well, everything changed, you know, that, and I can't even go through and name all of the things that changed. So once you see it, it'll just give you a different way to look at things. And uh, this degrees of freedom concept is really not new. We've had that in a Y1451 standard, but, you know, uh, we have that in CAD systems. We have that in uh, CMMs, in, in the manufacturing equipment. So I think it's just, opens your eyes and just looks at it a different way. So there'll be uh, degrees of freedom concept will be explained. Uh, you'll have the degrees of freedom chart. Uh, one thing that's uh, kind of important too, another term that we, uh, we, we eliminated here was the uh, uh, true geometric counterpart. Remember we used that? That term was been replaced and we don't use that one anymore. Remember true geometric counterpart or TGC we used to call it? Well, now it's replaced with this term we call a datum feature simulator. And there is uh, two kinds of simulators now. And there's a physical simulator and a theoretical simulator. The theoretical simulator is the way the engineer, the designer thinks is everything is perfect. And then there's another simulator we call the physical simulator. And the physical simulator would be like the collet, the chuck, the surface plate, and so on. Now, every time we talk in the standard, when they talk simulator, they're talking about that perfect simulator. And every time we talk in a book, we're talking about the perfect one. And when you want to talk about the imperfect one, that one has tolerance, right? But the engineer, we don't think in tolerance. So that's something that's new, that just a terminology change a little bit. Also, let's take a look at it. There is a really important, I think, here is this is datum feature simulator requirements. There's a set of uh, rules there, and this set of rules, what they do is, is they define how you set up a datum reference frame. So uh, that's on uh, page uh, 613 in your workbook, and you want to go through and understand that because that's the whole basis. Before how you set up this coordinate system and order a precedence, you all, you knew it, but you know, you couldn't really find it in a book. It was all displaced, and now it's in one place. It lists what it is. So that's really important. We're going to cover that in that uh, unit six. And then there's going to be examples and there's going to be exercises. I encourage you to work out some of the exercises when you're working in degrees of freedom. In unit seven, you're going to find datum feature modifiers. And that's where we're going to explain what those new modifiers are and the rules for those modifiers. That's the MMB, the LMB, and the RMB. I think you'll find that interesting. And then we show you how to calculate boundaries for these. We never did that in the earlier standard. And then there's going to be practical demonstrations of this datum feature shift. In the uh, 2009 standard, they say they clarified the, the uh, datum feature shift. And we did clarify it the way the boundaries work. And I think in our examples, we clarified. So if you re really weren't sure how those data modifiers work, you take a look at that unit, and I think you'll do it. And there'll be some examples on how to calculate them out. And, and so it's uh, just some examples I think you'll find interesting. We use a lot of animations and graphics there that you'll find interesting. And then... Um, Let's see, after that, we're going to do a little bit of uh, paper gauge examples and uh, in, in that unit also. And there'll be some examples and exercises. Now, in Unit 8, you're also going to view Unit 8. In Unit 8, we have uh, contour datum features. Now, some of those, you might say, well, I already saw that. You had that in your book before. And there's a lot of things that we had in our material that we used before, and you thought it was just standard, but it wasn't really in the standard. So, like I said, we really expanded that datum section. And, and I think, like Scott's been saying all along, we improved that standard, and, and the standard has caught up now with industry, and we have went a little bit further. So there will also be in that unit, there's going to be datum target applications. And it's something that's new that I think you'll find interesting is this datum, movable datum target symbol. And then take a look in the book. Uh, we didn't do too much in the uh, video series on it, but the uh, datum targets can be applied at MMB, LMB, and RMB. So there's more information in the book. Now, when you go to Unit 9, I think that'll really be a surprise because there's going to be everything new in there. There's really not too much new. This is where it uh, some advanced concepts in there. A pattern of holes as a datum feature. Uh, we've used that before, but this time now what they talk about, what does it mean when it's at regardless of material boundary, which the standard did not cover before. 
a funny thing like coaxial holes as a datum feature. They really didn't show that in the datum uh, before, and now they did. We've had it in our workbook, so you're probably going to say, well, that's nothing new. But when you try and find it in the 94, it won't be there, but it will be in a 2009. And then there's here this rotational control about an axis. Let me just tell you a little bit about that. It's kind of interesting. We had uh, some real problems. I guess the biggest dilemma that we had in that standard is that whenever you have an axis, uh, for example, you know, like an axis uh, on, a, on, a, on a diameter, a shaft or something, and then we wanted to be able to stop the rotation with it. How do you stop the rotation when you're using some other feature like a key or maybe a surface? Did you, uh, did you rotate it so uh, you know, it was lined up and made, the, made it parallel or was it cocked? How did you do it? And this standard here, it's what we used to call the tertiary datum problem in our, in, our, uh, in our standards committee. And really, it works with secondary datums, too. But it just kind of got coined that name. So there's some good examples there. And uh, so it'll be uh, rotational control about an axis. And then you're going to have surfaces that are modified at RMB and MMB. And why we can modify surfaces, because now we think of it at boundaries rather than, you know, regardless of size. How could you apply regardless of size or max material to a surface? But now we can because we're looking at boundaries. These are regardless of material boundaries. So anything that has a boundary, a modifier can be applied. There's going to be irregular features. Remember we talked about that earlier in this unit. They can be defined as datum features. We're going to talk about that uh, translation modifier. And uh, that's where we're going to be able to uh, allow uh, simulators to move. Uh, and then there's going to be a customized datum reference frame. Now, the customized datum reference frame, that's not going to be for everybody. Uh, that is uh, something that's a little more advanced in the, in, the, in, the, uh, in the geometric system. But I think you'll find that interesting. There's certain places they, we need that kind of thing. Yeah, that's using the XYZ UVW. And uh, with those rotational and uh, transla translation controls, you can really put some really exacting requirements on the datum reference frame. Pretty interesting. Now, what's really important, and I say it in that unit too, we both say it, is, is that it's not something, okay, see if I can use this. It's, uh, you know, it, it's there, and it really, I guess, even if you don't use it, you say, okay, I understand the logic behind it. And you can see how you can open up a feature control frame now, and you can look at the DNA in there exactly what it says. You can close it up. You know, and by being very mathematical now, you can see that we're moving closer to where uh, coordinate measure machines can actually read those feature control frames and understand what's going on. So you can you, you look at that and you begin to see where the future is coming. Uh, let's see here. Another thing is is multiple data reference frames. Now, multiple data reference frames, you might say that's nothing new. We've used that, and we have we've had that in our book for a number of years. Uh, but uh, it wasn't in the standard exactly how you switch a datum reference frame. So there's a little adapter. We have it in, in our material. And so, again, how much of this is new, you know, how much experience you have, I don't really know. So what I do is, is uh, look in there and look at a lot of the examples in there. And, uh, all right, then there's going to be some examples, and there's also going to be uh, some exercises in there. And then I had the appendix. The appendix in, uh, in our book, if you take a look at that appendix, there's going to be more detailed information in the back of the book that you have, the Geotal Pro book. You look in there, and it's going to give you more information uh, in the, uh, on the information in there. And that's this book here that uh, we have in the back in the appendix. Uh, I think you'll find this book, uh, we have a lot of color pictures, and they match the colors and the slides. So this here will be uh, used uh, not only through the program, but as a reference uh, afterwards. In the back, we have a nice uh, table here that shows you kind of a matrix of how the whole system, and you can look at that. So I, uh, I hope this, uh, this little update and get you uh, going and get you excited about using the standard. Some people have said, oh, we're not going to use the new standard. Uh, we're going to wait. We don't have the symbols yet. That's, that's not really the way the, process, the thinking process you want to go. It's, it's just a whole new outlook. It's just looking at things different. So it explains some of the things in the 94 standard that weren't clear and it wasn't, in, you know, how would you explain it to people? Now it's just very clear. So you can use this, uh, this uh, 19, or 2009 standard and the 2009 workbook that we have to teach in the 94. You know, that, I mean, they're, they're compatible. Mm -hmm. The core concept material is the same. It's just that it's clarified and very clear.